I, I'm going to choose the, the book Tim read from to begin with. I think one of the things that's interesting about this book is it touched on so many recurring themes of memory. Uh, it's hard to really, as us, to be here, you know, we can look back and we know our history, we know our narrative, we know where we're from, we have control of our comings and goings. But it's hard for us to think of what happened when, when all of that is removed or taken from you. What happens to your identity? What happens to your memory? And uh, I think, although this was about forgetfulness, this was the creation of a memory for forgetfulness. So it was a construct of that memory. And I, I look at it as much as a struggle, but as a triumph of humanity to create literature that all Palestinians, all people could kind of say, this is ours, this is our memory. And that's why I think Darwish is so revered and so loved. He's done that for the Palestinian people. Okay, this is his meditations we're using on coffee. And this is a really beautiful section, and I'm a coffee lover, so I'm going to read this here. I want the aroma of coffee. I want nothing more than the aroma of coffee. And I want nothing more from the passing days than the aroma of coffee. The, real, the aroma of coffee so I can hold myself together, stand on my feet and be transformed from something that crawls into a human being. The aroma of coffee so I can stand in my share of this dawn up on its feet, so that we can go together this day and I down into the street in search of another place. How can I diffuse the aroma of coffee into my cells while shells from the sea rain down on the sea facing kitchen, spreading the stink, the stink of gunpowder and the taste of nothingness? I measure the period between two shells. One second. One second. Shorter than the time between breathing in and breathing out. Between two heartbeats. One second is not long enough for me to stand before the stove by the glass facade that overlooks the sea. One second is not long enough to open the water bottle or pour the water into the coffee pot. One second is not long enough to light a match, but one second is long enough for me to burn. I switch off the radio, no longer wondering if the wall of this narrow hallway will actually protect me from the rain of rockets. What matters is that a wall will be there to veil air fusing into metal, seeking human flesh, making a direct hit, choking it or scattering shrapnel. In such cases, a mere dark curtain is enough to provide an imaginary shield of safety. For death is to see death. I want the aroma of coffee. I need five minutes. I want a five-minute truce for the sake of coffee. I have no personal wish other than to make a cup of coffee. With this madness, I define my task and my aim. All my senses are on their mark, ready at the call to propel my thirst in the direction, in the direction of one and only goal, coffee. Coffee for an addict like me is the key to the day, and coffee for one who knows it as I do means making it with your own hand and not having it come to you on a tray. Because the bringer of the tray is also the bearer of the talk, and the first coffee, the version of the silent morning, is spoiled by the first words. Dawn, my dawn, is antithetical to chatter. The aroma of coffee can absorb sounds and will go rancid, even if these sounds are nothing more than a gentle good morning. Coffee is the morning silence, early and unhurried, the only silence in which you can be at peace with self and things, creative, standing alone with some water that you reach for in lazy solitude and pour into a small copper pot with a mysterious shine, yellow turning to brown, that you place over a low fire. Oh, that there is a wood fire. Stand back from the fire a little and observe a street that has been rising to search for its bread ever since the ape disentangled himself from the trees and walked on two feet. A street borne along on carts loaded with fruits and vegetables and vendors. Cries notable for faint praise that turn produce into a mere attribute of Christ. Stand back a little and breathe air sent by the cool night 
Then return to your low fire, if only it were a wood fire, and watch with love and patience the contract between the two elements, fire colored green and blue and water roiling around breathing out white tiny granules that turn into a fine film and grow. Slowly they expand and quickly swell into bubbles that grow bigger and bigger and break. Swelling and breaking, they're thirsty and ready to swallow two spoonfuls of coarse sugar, which no sooner penetrates than the bubbles calm down to a quiet hiss, only to sizzle again in a cry for a substance that is none other than the coffee itself, a flashy rooster of aroma and eastern masculinity. Remove the pot from the low fire to carry on the dialogue of a hand, free of the smell of tobacco and ink, with its first creation, which as of this moment will determine the flavor of your day and the arc of your fortune, whether you're to work or avoid contact with anyone for the day. What emerges from the first motion and its rhythm, from what shakes it out of a world of sleep rising from the previous day, and from whatever mystery it will uncover in you, will form the identity of your new day, because coffee, the first cup of coffee is the mirror of the hand, and the hand that makes the coffee reveals the person that stirs it. Therefore, coffee is the public reading of the open book of the soul, and it is the enchantress that reveals whatever secrets the day will bring. Wow. Wow. Yeah.